Hi, my name is Terry and welcome back to my workshop. Today I'm going to start to build a table for my Triton plane of thickness up. Uh, I currently have one, which I built during the first lockdown, but at the time all the timber yards were closed as we, as we all know, so I was limited for timber. So I mounted my Triton plane of thickness up on an old worktop, which was mounted on top of an Ikea stall, which isn't ideal. That then sits on some casters and it served me well so far, but I've got these offcuts and I thought to myself today, I'll make a new table for the Triton plane of thickness up. I'm going to make it 50 centimetres by 100 centimetres, so half a metre by a metre basically, and I'll mount a sheet of ply across the top with some fork two across the top to support it, and then the Triton will sit on top. So let's get making. So let's start making some cross members, but first we need to put them through the thickness up. This is standard C16 construction lumber, as you can see, uh, which is rounded off, which is not what I want. So I'm going to stick these through the thickness up and just take the tops down on them. So here we go. Ear defenders on. There we go, nice square edges, and that'll be the two top supports. So it's now over to the miter saw to cut these cross members to size. I've cut these at 105 centimetres. I shall now take them over to the bench, clamp them in position, just to give me an idea of how it's going to look. And then I'll start to mark the bottoms. Okay, so I'm just marking out the joints that I need to cut out. And I should do that on my miter saw. Now this little black lever that I'm moving over allows you to make cuts to a certain depth. I believe they call it trenching. It's a great feature on the Makita. As you can see, you have to adjust it, turning the little dial on the top and that would allow the saw to go down to a certain depth. That's perfect for what I'm about to do. Now I always put a piece of waste timber behind whenever I'm trenching. Now the reason for this, as you probably know, is your blade is circular. So if you didn't, because the blade isn't going all the way down to the bottom, it's only going down to the depth of the trench, you would end up with a semi-circle cut if you didn't do this. This is what I do anyway, and it works for me. I just need it to be a little bit deeper, so a little bit of fine tuning as you can see. Now I'm just going to clean up these joints, but as you can see, the saw has done a pretty good job of it. But, I'm just going to fine tune them with a nice chisel. Now I really didn't have to move too much material at all as you can see. I'm now going to go over these with a little sanding block. I often have blocks laying around the workshop with sandpaper glued to them. This works pretty well for me. So that's the top joints done. Now I'm going to move over to the bottom joints. So I'm just going to mark those with a pencil and cut those out in exactly the same way on the saw. So I didn't bother recording cutting out the bottoms. You've seen me cut out the tops in exactly the same way. And as you can see, they fit together quite nicely. And now for a dry fix. Okay, so just done a dry fit. Now it's time to add some glue and some screws. Need to mark first of all where I'm going to put my um, screws. So we'll mark those and take these over to the uh, pivot drill. 
sink. Now the beauty of this drill press is the ability to be able to lock the position so that every other countersink will now be the same depth. As with any bench build, you want it to be nice and square, so out with the large square. One side down, one to go. Okay, so we've now got the sides, it's a case of a couple of cross members. Cut those already, um, two tops, case cut a couple of bottoms, gluing and screwing together, and then we have the base of the stand. Okay, so that's the four cross members cut. Top, bottom, top, bottom, same again, drill, countersink, glue, screw, job done. So that's the base made, now it's a case of putting the top on it. I'm going to be using 18 mm ply, just need to take some measurements and get cutting. Okay, so let's get the uh, Triton off the old stand. As I mentioned earlier, this is an old IKEA uh, stool, which I had to use during lockdown when I got this. Um, so let's get it off. Time for another time for a new one. Okay, forgot how heavy this was. So I need to place this in its position where it's going to go. Um, so I can strengthen it. 
because I also want to, when I put these screws in, I want to be able to make sure it's not just screwing into the 18 mil ply, it's actually screwing into something else underneath. So I'm going to mark central now where this is going to go, and then I'll reinforce underneath the ply. Okay, so let's get some measurements. Okay, that's looking pretty central. It's working out exactly 14 and a half inches each side, which is perfect. So, I'm going to mark where those bolts would go. Go approximately So I'm just marking these cross members with a pencil as you can see. So when I take them out for putting glue on, I can put them back knowing they're going to go back in exactly the same space. So we're going to fix the top. I've decided I don't want screw holes in the top. But I think it looks a lot neater if you can get away with them. So I'm going to use some pocket hole jigs. Uh, really simple to use. Clamp that on. Doesn't matter where, because you won't see the screws still be underneath. So let's get some glue on and let's get this glued on. Okay, get this in position and get some clamps on it. I've decided to put the thickness on top to add some extra weight. Right, let's get some screws in. I'm using 25mm Craig pocket hole screws. Right, okay, now it's time to get some casters onto this. I've got the casters I used to have on the old stand that the Triton sat on, so I'm going to use those. They're perfect. I think they're a standard sort of three inch caster uh, with lockable wheels, which is obviously quite important on something like this. So, let's get the casters on.
always trim the edges if I'm using ply. It just protects the ply a little bit. I know it's only a workbench, but I always run a bit of batten around the edge. I've done it on every workbench I've ever made. It just protects it that little bit more. Um, I'll show you if I can just swing the camera around. Swing the camera around rather. So, on my table saw bench, as you can see, all the way around. My bench is over there on the side, my real old bench is. My mitre saw station, I always run a piece of batten all the way around, just to protect the ply. Stops it getting sort of bashed around. I'll just quickly clamp this into place to allow me to get some nails in. I always offer up another pre-cut mitre piece, it's just a little trick that I've got to make sure I get it in the right place before I nail it. I'm just going to sink these nail heads in with a nail punch. Perfect. Right, let's get it back in place. From memory, it was 14 and a half inches either side. Ah, so now with the trim, probably more like 15 and a half. 15, 15, 15, 15. Right, let's get it bolted down. We use these coach, coach bolts. I think they're, called, they're not coach bolts, I'm not sure what they're called, but that's what we're going to use. You'll notice I've got a piece of masking tape down on either side just to help me line it up so if I do move it, it goes back into the same place, as you can see. And that's probably a 10mm spanner. Yep. Fix and you can really hear it pulling into the wood. Don't forget we've got the strengtheners underneath. Bob two cross members. Really good fixing. It's not going anywhere. Now we're onto the table. Right, so plane of fitness is mounted. Really pleased with that. That's nice and secure. Just remove the infeed and out feed tables. That was really simple to do. I'm going to put my own table that runs all the way through. So the first thing I'm going to do is build a platform either side and then I'll run something like some melamine bolt all the way through the full length which gives me 1.2 meters of table which should help the material glide through really nicely. So let's get on with that and let's start making the, the uh, pick platform. I'm probably going to use something like this three but two um, so it's nice and solid and rigid. So let's get on with that. I've wound the machine down onto these two blocks so I can get a true measurement of the height of the table. 
which is 6.3 mil. So I've cut four pieces, two for each side, and they butt up each side against the table. I've quickly cut six cross members to add extra support, which I'm now going to fix. Hopefully you can now see what I mean. These should strengthen it. So that's the side supports fitted. I haven't bolted them down yet. That will be the next job. As you can see, they'll be bolted down to the bench. A melamine ship will run all the way through and any timber that goes through the machine should literally just glide through nicely on top of the melamine. So next thing to do is go and buy a sheet of melamine. I'll be back soon. So I'm back from the local DIY store. I've just bought a sheet of 18 mil, they call it furniture board. It's basically chipboard that's coated with melamine. And that will go all the way through, as you can see. Just got to trim the end off the other end. I was thinking about leaving the overhang, but I know I'll catch myself on it. It will get knocked about and chipped. So I'll make it flush and just trim the end off. Now with this melamine board, they do this in two types. Um, I didn't realise that. You can buy 16mm and 18mm. Um, you can buy it with a flat, shiny surface, which I've gone for, or you can buy it with a matte, uh, with a slightly dimpled effect. I've gone for the shiny um, surface, so the board should slide through much easier. So, what I've got to do is cut it to size and get it fixed on. So, let's move on to that. So, sheep's now cut down to size, in case of fixing it onto the bottom. As you can see, I'm going pocket holes again. Because I don't really want to screw through the top of the metal mine. The clamp's in place so it doesn't move. And there's a 25mm pocket hole screw. Sure if you can spot the problem here but what i've done is i've done my pocket holes the wrong way so the screws will have to go upwards like that which clearly isn't going to work so i need to re-drill that one so one side done yep that seems to work now the other side Right, now let's see if it fits. Yes. There we go. Now I'm really happy with that. There we have it. One plane of fitnesser, bench, table, call it what you will. Um, I'm really pleased with that. It's come out better than I expected, to be honest with you. Um, we're going to have a bit of a test run shortly. And it's nice and level. It may help if I put the dust extraction on. What a difference that makes. Okay, so there we have it. One plane of fitnesser, table, bench, 
completed. I'm not sure what you'd call it. I suppose it is a bench, really a bench on wheels. It's really easy to move around. It's on casters. Casters are lockable, which I think is quite important on any machinery. You don't want it moving around when you're operating it. Um, what I would say, if anyone's going to make one of these um, to get rid of snipe, I have to tell you it doesn't. Um, it reduces snipe, but it doesn't get rid of it completely. And I don't think you ever will with one of these machines. There's other ways of getting around that by making trays and so forth when you're sliding um, things through like chopping boards and so on. But this won't get rid of snipe, it does improve it. I built this really for my own reasons. I like to have all of my tools bench mounted on wheels, on casters. I'm not one of these for having to put it under a bench and keep pulling it out and so on. For me, I want my tools on benches, secure, fixed down. Uh, and that's pretty much it really. Um, I'm pleased with the way it's come out. It's not a bad build. Um, and if you like the video, um, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.